Good Monday morning. Are you ready to dig back into our study through the book, Purpose Driven Life? There's 40 chapters, although in some of the new editions, there's 42. And uh, we'll probably do those other two. I, I haven't even read them. My edition that I'm using only has 40. And I don't, what, I don't know which one you have. But I think we'll get through the 42. I'll get my hands on one and we'll do it together. But I love reading this. We're, and, you know, we come to chapter 21 today. If you have your book, you can turn to chapter 21, which is actually a couple milestones. One, we're getting through the halfway point of the book. And it's the last chapter in the second purpose, the reason that we are here on Earth. And Rick talks about five, why you are not in heaven, why you are still here on earth. First one was to worship. And God loves worshiper, worshipers and worship. And we talked for seven days about that. And then we talk about, this one is on fellowship. You are still here to fellowship with other believers. And where do you do that? It's in Christ's church, in his church. His church has many small units because no one church could ever hold the millions of people. So you, I hope, I'd love if you come to Saddleback, but I want you to go to a Christian church. You need to. It's not because I want to, now that I think that's a funny thing to say. Because God wants you to. If you are a follower of Christ, you are a part of his church, and you need to be in a local church. Now, this being the last chapter on this purpose, it's entitled Protecting Your Church. And the verse that's right at the top expresses God's desire in this area that Rick wants us to address today. And I'll tell you what, in some ways, this is one of the very most important issues that the book raises. Here's the verse. Colossians 3.14 says, Most of all, most of all, let love guide your life, for then the whole church will stay together in perfect harmony. God loves when we get along and have unity with other believers. His desire for the church, and remember, it is his church. We're to be used by God to protect the unity of our church. There's, for me, now, what's the, per Rick mentioned the perfect symbol of diversity but unity and that's in god himself father son and holy spirit perfect unity they are one but they're different in function and purpose and what they do that's how we are in the church we're different but we're to be one in purpose and one in in spirit and this is so very, very important. How do I know that? Rick mentions it briefly, but I want to, I, I, I need to read to you this morning from John chapter 17. And this is why I know Rick Warren in his book is right on track with this one. Because the very last prayer that is recorded anyway that Jesus prayed before he was arrested and crucified is actually him praying for you and me. For you and me? Yes. Listen to these words. It's in John 17, verse 20. Jesus praying, my prayer is not for them, the disciples, alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Through their message. Who is that? That's all who came after, basically, the earliest of believers. 
church started in Acts chapter 2, and those people told other people, and those people told other people, and somebody, somewhere, sometime, if you're a follower of Christ, told you about Jesus. I mean, you might have heard it through a church service, then maybe somebody brought you. Maybe you even heard it on television. Then somebody paid for it because they wanted you to hear. However it was, we fall in that group. Those who will believe in me through their message. And what did Jesus pray? Verse 21. That all of them, us, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Jesus prays that we would be one in one accord, one in purpose, one in our following of him. We're different. We've talked about even in the last week, we talked about how the body of Christ is different. We have different roles, different functions. We might even have different opinions on, on other issues. And we do. And we do. Let me assure you. But we can be one. There's nothing that grieves me more. And I, I even said, I said me, but it's the Lord. Nothing grieves him more than to see church splits. That half the people go, fall, usually following a person, or they don't like the decision that the Board of Elders made, let's say, or something else, and they leave the church. Rather than working it out amongst themselves and staying together, they leave over divisions. Oh, that breaks my heart. In Ephesians 4, 3, and Rick quotes this voice, verse, it says, make every effort Every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. We're to work at it. We're to work at it. Oh, man. I hope you can read through chapter 21 today, because we'll never get to all the points that Rick makes. But let's just start. He says, focus on what we have in common and not in our differences. We have one faith, one Lord, one body, one purpose. We're one in Christ. Really? And you've got to focus on what you have in common. Number two, he said, be realistic in your expectations. And, you know, the fact is, believers, other church members, will disappoint you. They may not call you when you think they should. They may not have opened a chair for you or something in who knows? I have heard, my, through my decades in ministry, I have heard every offense, I'm sure. And none of them mount up. Yeah, I, I can acknowledge. Yes, I'm sorry you were hurt. I am. But that's life. And Christians do their best, but they're not perfect. And they will disappoint you. And you, guess what? You disappoint them. I dis I know I disappoint people. And for me, you know, I might not call or something. We're trying. I'm trying. I love Rick Warren's quote of Groucho Marx where he says, he had a famous saying, he wouldn't, Groucho Marx, I wouldn't want to belong to any club that would let me in, he said. <laughs> There's no perfect church because they let us in. Hey, I, I'll see you back tomorrow. This is a great, there's some great, great points in this chapter. I hope you're reading along. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow, though. And we're going to start a, the third purpose of why on earth am I here? See you then. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give